everyone, this is Alpha Ali. Welcome back to the channel. Hope everyone's doing okay. So today I'm doing another VOD review. This is for Rue Cookie. This is Rue's actually first ever VOD review, which is really, really exciting. And we're doing it offline. Um, so it's not on stream. Um, I'm recording this kind of in my own time, which obviously if you guys want your own VOD review, whether it be on stream or off stream, I'll kind of show some information about it now. Would you like your own free Mercy VOD review? I do them live on my Twitch on Sundays at 2pm in the UK, but don't worry if you can't make that time as I also do them offline and upload them straight to YouTube as well. They only cost 7,500 Koala Moolah or channel points as they're probably better known, which you can get completely for free by watching like my stream basically. I also stream on Wednesdays, Fridays and Saturdays at around 5.30pm UK, so be sure to hop on over there, get saving and you can have your very own VOD either shown live on stream or if you're done offline and just be posted to YouTube afterwards. For more info, do not be afraid to hop into the stream or come and join the Koala Creek Discord and ask one of my lovely mods over there. The link for that will be in the description. Now, back to the VOD. Uh, but yeah, so this is a uh, plat 5 to plat 4 game for Rue, and it's a PC game as well, which is really, really cool, and it is a win. Uh, they said, frankly, I don't really know what uh, to put here. Something I've noticed is that I've been doing a... Um, and over a long course is related to damage boost and it's not doing it enough but whatever you see i can improve on i'll happily take also there was a wholesome moment at the end with the enemy mercy uh okay awesome okay so, so i guess we're gonna have to look at damage boost um it's kind of a very because i've literally i've just done another offline vod and we talked to him about kind of if, if we're doing too much damage boost or maybe not healing enough now it's actually they think that they're not doing enough damage boost so i guess uh we'll kind of like just get into it we'll go straight into the vod i guess um we are using witch with a brand new jade i've never actually seen witch with jade yet so i think that's really really cute um really really quick piece of advice though um for flash points and um control points if we can try to speed boost out of spawn the reason why i want to speed boost out of spawn is because if we speed boost out of spawn obviously speedy team it will get your team um to the point a lot quicker if we can get to our team to the point a lot quicker and our team is the one to control the points it actually makes it harder for the enemy team because they have to kind of like push in instead of it being like a big kind of like brawl ish i guess so it gives us kind of like a, a bigger what's it called advantage for us if we speed out of spawn here but it doesn't matter too much if you don't do it all good and looking at our team as well we have obviously roadhog we have cast genji and kiriko a really really good damage boostable comp here we don't know yet but obviously they have a farer which means we might end up obviously staying with our cast a little bit more but i'm gonna see what we end up doing love how you're already out here damage boosting your genji as he's already coming out really really nice Strength to healing your, your your cast, which is really, really great. Nice. All good so far. You can't really do anything with your Genji because he kind of like just went in by himself. Nice heals here. First piece of advice with your damage boost is when you see Hog hook someone, just quickly flick that damage boost on. It ha it only has to be like for a split like second. Second thing as well, I feel like you're jing yourself a bit too far out here, by the way. Don't get me wrong, I love how much distance you are, you know, making right now. But at the same time, we still want to try like, you know, stay within like, you know, range of people. So I would love maybe, because you were here, maybe do a GA that's kind of roughly about here or maybe it's like kind of about here. So we're out of LOS of the enemy team. But also we can stay in being range of the hog now obviously i'm saying damage boost the hog hook the reasoning is because it really helps him try to get that one shot combo off if we don't manage to get the damage boost onto him people can very easily escape it or well, i mean obviously this one he gets stunned um but in general hog will struggle a lot to try and get the one shot combo off unless he's like quite skilled with the one shot combo which this is a plat game so we can respect he's not going to be like six for example that's absolutely or like what's it called unsalted soul you know they're not gonna be hitting those one shot hog combos you know so if we can we want to try and just quickly flip the blue beam onto him when he's doing these one shot you know these like hook combos just to maybe try and get the el elimination off but it's all good nice heals here onto him we had to switch into our cast which is fine nice heals here nice love how much you're like you're flicking your beam here because obviously you know it's like nearly full and also we want to try and like you know damage boost his uh, abilities really really great beam management here i love it my only thing is i would be looking to kind of push in a little bit here the reason is because we want to try and heal up our hog obviously yes kiriko is here to heal up this hog but kiriko's healing isn't as good as someone say like an on or like a bap or like a moira it takes a little bit longer for her to heal so if it can push ourselves in a little bit forward all we have to do is just do a straight ga like we can just peek do a straight GA to Kiriko. We could just stop at this pillar. And then all we have to do is jiggle peek this hog. Get him a little bit healthier. Because if we get the hog healthier, he can then go and take space. Because hog's not going to take space when he's like really, really weak. So he's going to start hiding and be like, oh, 
I'm really weak and not want to peek. Whereas if he has health, he's going to be like, oh, hey, I'm going to walk forward. So if we can, try just to come and J forward here. Try and get your beam onto the hog. Try and, you know, just kind of top him up a little bit more here. And then we can go and push in. Nice. Obviously, we realize that other people are getting focused here, which is fine. Nice. Remember, we don't need to heal him to full HP. We could definitely start flicking on the damage boost a little bit sooner than what you're doing. But still, I love how you're, like, flicking that damage boost, though. It's really, really great. Nice that you're pinging that res. Nice as well that you don't go for it as soon as you as, as soon as you can, because obviously, you know, you know that the Doom's just going to punch you out a bit. Really, really nice. And I feel like at this point, we're just kind of, kind of stalling out a little bit. Ooh. This all comes from your bad sling here. I'll show it to you in a sec. Obviously, so we, talk, we talked about this bit. It's this sling here, okay? Whenever we want to, to help someone or like sling someone, we still want to also look out for our own position. And where we sling to here isn't the best positioning. We, will, we want to sling ourselves up onto here. The reasoning is because it then gives us a straight flight path to get out if we desperately need to. But also it takes longer for the enemy team to come and see us. Because as you can see, right, let's let's be the enemy far here. Enemy far is going to come round, around, around. And then she's going to be able to shoot you like straight away here. Whereas if you're stood up here, she would have to either come up and over or she'd have to like really come round to you. In which case it gives you enough time to react and just do a straight GA away. It also means that you don't end up getting caught on this wall like you end up doing in a second. And you kind of like end up panicking. You're like, ah... So it just means if you're playing up on this wall, we could just essentially just do a, like a nice straight GA away and we could just stay alive basically. But it's all good. And yeah, just unfortunately you end up kind of getting picked off and everything. It is even though, so I'm going to see how, what you guys end up doing in a second. Whether your team decides to push in a little bit or not, I don't know. Oh, your wrists are coming back to you. So, so sweet. You guys can definitely contest this, though. If your team looks to contest this, we need to push... Pop the Valk, I think, maybe. Nicely goes straight out the LOS of it. We don't need the Valk now, which is really, really great. I think maybe if you guys didn't get as many picks as you did, I would have popped the Valk. But nice, like, what's called? Nice that you're having that, um... Strictness about you and not popping that Valk. Nice. Look to just do little council GAs here and just play kind of like around pieces of cover. Or like maybe like little GA bunny hop instead of doing the slings. Just in case the Doom starts to punch in and then we're not going to be stuck out like, ah, you know, like with a two second GA cooldown. Just kind of work on like doing some like little um, GA cancels here. Nice. We, yeah, we want to start backing off a little bit here now because we know they're going to start coming in. Nice. Nice damage boost here. We want to try and back off now though, because right now we don't really, really be stuck with our tank because we're very kind of like out of the way. I would be looking to jam myself back into this room now to play with my um with to play with my soldier. If I play here, it also means it gives me the option to go around to go and help my cast if needed, and it also means as well if my Aris is still here that we could definitely help out, help him out a little bit more. I'm glad you end up doing that, but I would have definitely done it a little bit sooner just to make sure you don't end up getting picked off. They're popping a the valve, which means they're gonna want to come in. Nice. Obviously, about to contest that. This is a perfect time to damage boost here. I would jig myself forward here. And whenever I'm in my Valk, I look to see who is doing the damage or who is in the center of the team. Right now, your Arissa is the one that's doing the damage. And she's just hit a javelin onto someone. We want to try and just sit and damage boost her just quickly for a second. Because right now, obviously, yes, it's really, really good that we're staying and healing these guys. But are, when the Doom is in his ult or when he's landing, are any of these guys doing any damage? No. Who's doing the damage? Our Arissa. So what we want to do here is we want to try and just stay with our Arissa a little bit more here. We we can still look at these guys, don't get me wrong. Like, for example, let's let's say we use our Valk like around here-ish. Because this means we can have our beams on the Arissa. But also it means that we can have a look at these guys. It's really good that you're aware of these guys and you're aware of where the Doom wants to use his ult. Which is, you know, really, really great, really good game sense. But at the same time, are any of these guys going to be able to do anything while they're all spreading out and waiting for the Doom to ult? 
no like this is a perfect opportunity for us to just sit here and help damage boost the Orissa. get in some of that extra damage onto the Orissa. possibly get a pick so you guys better get a pick here it forces the mercy res and then obviously you know while the mercy res in less healing everything like that so if we can valk here and help your Orissa, and then wait for the doom to land to go and help these guys just so we can keep that beam kind of usefulness up as much as we can because what we've ended up doing is I feel like we kind of like end up kind of abandoning our Orissa a little bit. Nice looking for the res. My only thing is as you're looking for this res, you end up kind of being really with a ton of vision on the res. Which is okay because, you know, you want to get this res off. But at the same time, don't be kind of like tunnel vision on this res and then you look at the team and suddenly everyone's dead okay as you're kind of looking i want you up until the point where you're about to res that orb be looking at your team because up until that point you press that you know rest on that orb you have the opportunity to just quickly ga and go and help them which might end up being that split, split second decision nice res so i will say really nice resin cover nice positioning here as well nice love loved all of your position for all of this i love how you played in the air because obviously you, you knew that what's it called um of the venture rules i loved as well when you came in you didn't just g straight to the team you said went up to go and help them really really good positioning from you here sweet absolutely amazing love this over j up as well obviously we don't have our res anymore there's still someone alive though so make so this is this is the point where you want to try damage boost we can save the healing till everyone has gone right now we want to try and push this damage boost to make sure that obviously what's it called this um doom doesn't end up coming in so i would have just kind of put the um the damage boost onto the cast because cast is the one that's going to do the most damage and just make sure that he's eliminated before we go to heal people because it's not like these guys are critical if these guys were critical then in which case i'd be like okay like you know you need healing um but because these guys are above critical, like, you know, they're very, very healthy right now. We can push that damage boost a little bit more. But really, really nice. Well played, that entire team. But I really, really loved all your decision making there. All good. And I guess we'll go to the next flashpoint. Oh, wait, the, oh I guess we're at the fountain one. Nice. Love how you notice that you know the doom is pushed up. Love how you go to go and help the Orissa with that. That's honestly, Brew, that that is absolutely amazing. I don't think you're having issues with your damage boost at all. In fact, obviously there are like certain points where like you can see someone else like being a little bit more aggressive. But on a, you know, I feel like you're doing really, really well here with what's called with your damage boost beam. Nice pick as well again. I see nice heals here. So what you can do here, this is very, very minuscule, but I think as well will help your damage boost a little bit more. We have Kiriko. Kiriko is playing very, very passively because Kir I feel like with Kirikos, they were either Kiriko OTPs, in which case they'll be kind of like up here climbing this wall, shooting some kunais, like in their back line, TPing, in which case you'll have to do a little bit more healing. Because your Kiriko is playing very passively like this, though, this means that you can allow the Kiriko just to top up the cast, and we could just pop the damage boost. And unless if the or, and it, like for example, what's going to happen is when the cast takes a bit of damage and he goes critical, he'll back off. He'll go out of the LOS, and he won't peak the LOS again until he knows he's healthy enough to go and re-peak it. In which case, we could just stick the blue beam onto the soldier instead. Stick the blue beam onto the soldier because he's like still being really, really aggressive. He's still you know wanting to contest in, and then he might back off, but then cast is healed up, so we can go back to good damage boost in him. It's a very kind of like minuscule thing and it only really happens when you have support that are very not heal body but are playing quite passively i guess and not very aggressively you find this a lot with like maybe like honor players that play a little bit more like far back into the back lines you'll find it a little bit more obviously with people that don't really main kiriko but are playing kiriko like for example myself <laughs> whenever i end up playing kiriko i feel like i don't play as aggressively as you would see say like august for example play kiriko because august will play kiriko very very aggressively but that's because he plays kiriko day in day out compared to me who flexes to kiriko every once in a while so you know i will play a lot more passively and a lot more like to help the team out it just depends on like your second support play style. Nice pushing forward to help the Arista here as well. Once again, same thing. I would look to kind of um, just damage boost um, someone else here. Just while your Arista is quite healthy, which is exactly what you've done. Just leave, once again, leave the healing for your Kiriko because your Kiriko is playing really, really passively. Nice heals here. 
so we know that um Thor is going to come in for a barrage at this point so i've been looking to just to stay with my um my hit scans and making sure that we're ready for the barrage also not standing too close to them so it means that if the barrage comes then we're out of ls of them nice nice we popped the valk my other thing is is we've not reacted to where the cast is it's good that we popped the valk because it's like oh the cast is there and don't get me wrong like i feel like this is a good valk usage as well because you know the enemy team is starting to push in so i like this valk usage but however we haven't reacted to where the cast is we've jaded ourselves up here and we realized ah, Cass! and then we've just jaded all the way over here us Jane all the way over here is still in the LOS of the cast. And if this was a higher rank lobby, Cass is going to poo 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 and you're dead, okay? If you can, because you see this cast, think to yourself, okay, I put my valve and I want to GA away. How can we get out of LOS of the cast in order to try and get away? Well, we can either GA behind the fountain, we can actually GA kind of like behind him because then we realize, oh, our cast is here in order to like you know to try and help a little bit more but yeah we could obviously this is fine because we don't know where the cast is here obviously we react with the valk which is you know completely fine but if we react with the valk making sure that we're geeing ourselves still out of his los nice damage boost here i just damage boost here just try and get out because um, these guys are going to do more damage than your pistol nice Still stay pushed up with these guys though. The reason why I want to stay pushed up with these guys instead of backing like really, really far off at the end of the uh, the end of your Valk is because, really key example, your cast has just picked up the Moira. We want to try and pick off these guys and make sure that we're getting these staggers. So it means that we can, you know, it means that we get more all percentage and it gives them less of an opportunity to be able to recontest those points because flashpoint points go so, so quickly. So we want to try to stay pushed up with these guys. So at the end of your valve, just try and make sure that we're getting our bearings and we're making sure that we're what's called. We're still staying pushed up with our team. This is nice. Get some really, really nice staggers in. Just make sure we're still being aware of our own position. We've walked very in a straight line here and this is completely in the, in the LOS of the enemy team. If we can, if we want to push forward, GA Bunny Hop, play here. If we know they're pushing back, GA Bunny Hop, go over here. Just if we can still try to kind of play our nice positioning while we're pushed up with them, or the, just in case the cast decides to two tap us. All right. Nice. Obviously, Mercy's res the Doom, so I'd be looking to GA myself back uh, a little bit more here because we know they're going to start pushing in. Remember, as well, we know they're going to have a lot of ults now because they haven't used their ults in a while. Obviously, you won't be able to do the ult percentage like I can, but I would know in my head that they're going to start coming up to ults. I will know they have, they'll have Barrage because, obviously, they've not used Barrage in a long, long minute. But also, as well, they've not used High Noon in a while. They haven't used Coalescence in a while. You and Mercy bounce pretty much at the same time at the last time, and you end up obviously getting more ult charge from her because she would have died. Um, so obviously she's not earn ult charge compared to you who's still alive. So she'll you'll still passively earn him because you popped your Valk. I'll be thinking Mercy's gonna have her Valk soon. Doom's gonna have his ult soon as well because he uses um all quite early on um in the first round. It's just these little things, and I would make sure that I am playing really far back and ready for these ultimates. If I am playing far back here, it means. I'm not going to be in LOS of the castle. It means if Forest has the barrage, I'm not near them. It means I'm not also going to have a charge punch directed at me by a Doom Fist. I'm not going to have a Coalescence in my face. And then, I don't know, Mercy Valks. <laughs> Mercy's not going to, you know, attack you because it's, it's Mercy. Unless it Mercy has good battle mode on you. Which, to be honest, this Mercy is really, really nice so far. So. But yeah, I would love to kind of jam myself back off a little bit sooner than what you have done. We're being very, very aggressive. Remember, we don't need to be in the um, the kit soon. We don't need to be in the kit soon here uh, because it's not going to help us in any way. Because, yes, kit soon gives us a movement boost. You know, movement boost, don't get me wrong. But everyone else is in the kit soon, which means everyone else is going to get directed. We don't need to save our GA cooldowns because if we just kind of play out of the LOS like this, we don't need to we don't need any extra GA cooldowns. It's also not gonna help us with our res because we've not used res. You know, we have res online, so it's not gonna you know, it's not gonna increase that cooldown. It's not gonna increase our ult charge. So right now we don't need to be stood in the kit soon. We can play off to one side like this. Because then if the Doom decides to drop in on the team, then we're already out of the way. However, if the, if the Doom decides to drop onto you, then we have a GA point. Because right now, if we're playing really, really up close to these guys and the Doom ult comes in, we don't have anyone to GA to. Whereas if we're playing out here and then the Doom decides to drop onto us, we can GA ourselves away. Alright? 
He decided to drop behind. And yeah. Can you see? Because we're not being ready and prepared for that ult. And also we didn't manage to GA ourselves into a good position away from the Doomfist. What I would have done here is I would have played back here. Doom drops onto me. So let's do a little GA cancel bunny hop out over to here. Doom's then going to look for a charge punch on me. But because I've done a GA bunny hop. I could just quickly GA to my Arisa, or I can GA to my Kiriko, or I could just GA myself out of the way of the Doom's Punch. Oh, Doom doesn't have a charge punch anymore, and he's just wasted his ultimates. Ha ah, ha ha ha. Obviously, these guys are probably still going to, like, die to Barrage. Like, that's, you know, that's going to happen. But we survived, and that's the main thing. Uh, but it's, we'll obviously, keep on going. I feel like these guys are going to cap that point now, but it's absolutely fine. Okay, that's fine. We should have not have definitely not Terror Surged. But also not Terror Surge, well, using the Terror Surge means that we force Valk. And that's also a waste. But that's fine. Go again, Lou. Nice, I guess we can hear the Doom to the side of us. The cast has noticed him. Nice how you're still playing out of the, out of the way of him. That's just unfortunate because there's two people being attacked. I like how you want to go for this res. Love that. Love how you wait for the safest opportunity to go in for that res. You know as well that your Kiriko is here for you, for that Zuzu in case you need it. Love how you waited for that res. Really good, like, patience. And discipline. Nice. You guys can push in really, really nicely now. Let's have a look at also. We have Cast High Noon and we have Visor. What's probably going to happen is either two of things. The Soldier is going to run it down main with his Visor and the Cast is going to go flank with his High Noon. Or... The cast is going to high new main and the soldier is going to go flank with his visor. You want to go with the person that's going to flank. At least I hope that one of these guys is going to go flank because that's what they should do. So you just want to have a look to see who is going to get... Obviously, these two ults are still like both really, really good ults. Soldier's ult is probably a little bit more better, I guess, if you're, if everyone is already out of the LOS of the cast. Just something to look forward to. But I'm I'm pretty sure that someone will come and flank over here. But they should, if not, they should do. They should come and flank with your damage boost and come and use their ult. Oh, you've all decided to come and flank. Go, go with your DPS here. The reason why I want you to go with your DPS here is because your Doom... Do, your... I'm oh, sorry, not your Doom. Your Arisa will be fine here with the Doom Fist because... Ha, you know she has the Kiriko with her you going with the the soldier right now gives him an amazing off angle to quick like surprise with his um with his what's it called with his um visor so i want you in this team fight to come come with this soldier here on this flank go for this visor with him remember as well orissa has so much hp if this was a dps this would be a slightly different story because obviously you know like the dps will be a little bit more vulnerable to um what's it called to the um to the reaper but because it's an orissa with the kiriko with them it should be fine my uh, prediction was correct by the way with this uh with the soldier obviously if you end up with a soldier here and you guys end up kind of like just chilling here i would crouch and drop my beam the reason why i want to crouch and drop your beam is because crouching will reduce the footstep noise and drop your beam will also reduce the beam noise because obviously there's no beam noise because the beam makes us like a little humming sound in case people don't know second thing as well the beam makes up really really bright light and in dark rooms like this it can very easily like, give you away for the flank so yeah keep going there and go see what you end up doing so you end up playing nicely you sing yourself forwards go and help with the what's called with the visor but we should have definitely been with the visor to begin with which i feel like i've kind of explained a lot nice peel back for the doom though lovely damage boost <laughs> i love that just the pistol like her body and goodbye love it but yeah although although we were this team fight we don't get me wrong like it's really good that you won this team fight i feel like we should have definitely gone with the soldier with his visor and damage boost a little bit sooner because we would have got the picks off a lot but a lot more confirmed compared to us just standing main with the high noon if you get me but so good we'll see where the next uh, point is going to be I guess it's at the end of the map, so we're going to go for a nice little wander across the map again, which is completely fine. Don't worry too much about your Arisa. Your Arisa is, like, really, really healthy right now. I'd be looking to push forward with your soldier. The reason is because if the soldier's by himself, he's going to really struggle to fight this Mercy Fara. And also, like, the Fara can very easily just... Poo -poo, and, you know, like, the soldier's dead. 
Whereas if you're with the soldier and you're providing that damage boost, it gives him a better opportunity to shoot down the far right easily, really, really quickly. Either Mercy can't res or Mercy will die during the res or Mercy will have to back off and try and res later. In any of those scenarios, you guys are up because you will still have your res or will still have your Mercy or will be up in numbers, depending on like what the scenario happens. But I'd be pushing forward with your DPS here. That's what I'm like trying to get at, basically. Because right now we're kind of like trailing behind. Nice pings, obviously, you know, to let people know that like, people are coming. That's fine. Nice damage boost here. Now, since we're calling to your team that your Valk's ready, I would definitely be looking to maybe use it if they start pushing in aggressively. Wait to GA here. We don't need to rush our GA. We can just wait till these guys are like at the correct beam distance for us to GA across. Remember, these guys aren't focusing us too much as well. If Doom tries to punch from here he won't be able to reach us if he tries to slam from here he's gonna have a really hard time reaching us so there's no rush right now we can just play it safe i would have bounced a lot sooner here the reason is because you know this team's gonna start pushing on to the tier the point i think this is purely because we are kind of lagging behind with the j here so i would have popped the back a little bit sooner not saying this is going to help save our soldier because it might not have done but i would have definitely popped it a little bit sooner i'm gonna see what you do to maybe look for this res don't go for this res until you know this arresta is fully Rah! in their faces i guess <laughs> that's what i'm trying to get out we want this arissa to be a distraction for us because right now us going in for this res and being like lum -de -dum -de -dum, everyone's gonna go wabam into your face but if we're doing the lum -de -dum with our res and arissa is like wabam with her spinny shield in here that it's a lot better for us we can also try and bait out the res because we know the farer has got barrage. So we don't actually need to go for this res straight away. Remember as well, we have time. We can stay back. We can maybe look to see that we're going to go do the res. And then, oh no, barrage, quick. And then we're like turning around and damage boosting all these guys. Farer falls. You now have an absolutely amazing free res because Doomfist will do his, his charge punch and charge in. Sure, if Doom ends up also hitting someone, they can peel back for them definitely. But I think your Kiriko still has a Zuzu. Um... And then, wabam, res. So just remember, we don't need to res like straight, straight away, basically. And use our team as a really, really good distraction if we can. Our uh, ends are falling. Everyone ends up falling at this point. I feel like, unfortunately, it's going to be a team fight loss. Oh, bless you. Yeah. You, you, know, you know in your head that was a bad res. But yeah, just, just remember that you don't need to res absolutely straight away. Nice. Very, very nice. Awesome. So you guys can push in with Kitsune in a sec. We have Terror Surge as well. So we maybe want to try and like help damage boost this Terror Surge. We've already forced Valk, which is great. A lot of the team are flanking behind. Okay. So if we know that they're coming behind, we want to G ourselves away. Now, where is our safest place in order to go to? It, it's not going to be here because this is obviously into the team. We want to try and sling ourselves as far away from the warrior as possible. Come over to this health pack earlier. And then what's going to happen is these guys will start pushing in like your Rissa has done. Then you can G yourself forward, G yourself up because you can actually kind of go over this um barrier a bit as well so you can kind of like just vibe up here basically you're completely out of the way of the moira right now i feel like we're being too slow to react to the moira because it's like you're like ga and in moira 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 and then you kind of like wait for the last second to go in ga i want you to use that ga sling as early as possible go straight to this health pack and then keep going in i just feel like we're a little bit too slow there your team are pretty healthy though so they might be able to do something yeah your team definitely win this out, unless if it all goes drastically wrong with the Doomfist. Oh! This is the enemy mercy. Look how you ping it. Oh no, don't shoot her! I wanna play her go! Bless her. She's going in the wrong direction as well, let's be honest. Um, I would I wanna play her go, she looks so lost, bless her. Oh, I think she she realized she's going the wrong way. No, she's oh bless her. She's she's going for her own little wander. I think she's gonna get taken out by the cast as well in a second. I'm gonna feel really really bad for her. This poor Mercy, she went the wrong way. Oh, she's one HP. Go on, Mercy. Go on. No, sorry. Hold on. We need to cheer off this Mercy. Go on, Mercy. Go on, Mercy. No. 
Sorry, we, 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 we will go back to you now. I feel really bad. Poor Mercy. Anyways, back, back, back onto the VOD. Uh, we need to obviously be prepared for the next team fight. Remember that they used like quite a few ultimates recently. I'd obviously be knowing that they're going to have high noon. Because I know they're going to have high noon, I'm going to be looking to play at the backup point here. I'd be looking to play my cover already. Because if the cast uses high noon now, you're dead. Whereas if you're stood over here, the cast has to like, you do is like very, very slow, like strutty walk forward in order to try and like come to you. So if you can, play off to the side here with your Orissa like this and wait for the high nude over here or like wait for someone to come and push you out here you just want to try and like play off the point as mercy it's very very rare that you want to play off the point like my biggest piece of advice to anyone that's playing mercy is do not be a payload princess or be like a points princess i guess um the reason is because there is absolutely no need for you to be on the point unless if you're trying to stall it out or you're the only person that is able to touch the point or if like you're quite high hp and someone is like really weak you can go and touch but in, like in a scenario like this you a the points are being contested so you don't need to be on it but also b you have a lot of people to contest this point for you so you could just buy and like play back here basically and again you beam onto the soldier finally which is great Obviously, we all have them moments. Nice positioning here. I'd be looking to back myself back off now, though. Do that as a straight GA to your cast, and then it just it saves you from doing the sling. Because you end up kind of, like, GAing to the Orissa instead. Do that as a straight GA to your cast. Just to save the cooldown. Nice, obviously, going in to go and help. But yeah, do you see how like we're still playing like main? Whenever we want to do these GA backs, we're gonna try and like do it off to the side or something like that. Whenever we're playing Mercy Against the Doom, I try to play off, uh, I guess, like, perpendicular to my team. If you don't know what perpendicular means, it just means kind of like at a ninety degree, uh, a ninety degree angle from your team. The reasoning is because it then makes the Doom first choose. It makes the Doom first choose whether he wants to punch and get a lot of charge by punching the entire team, or if he wants to punch you. But if you play as as back as possible, A, he won't be able to reach you, or B, we will be able to dodge it quickly, or we can G ourselves away. You know, it kind of like predict his punch. So if we can try just to play off on an angle from him instead of just playing directly with the team. Nice, obviously playing back. Falk here. Nice. Very nice Falk. Nice heals on to Kiri. I, as soon as Kiri is like above half, half HP, though, I'd be looking to damage boost either like the Arrest of Ult or the Visor or something. Just to try and wipe these guys as quick as possible. Oh, that poor Mercy. <laughs> and overall, Rue, really, really well played, okay? I feel like overall, Rue, your um, general Mercy is really, really great, okay? Uh, I feel like the majority of Rue Rezes, apart from the last one, which we talked about, were really, really great. I love... Uh, I'm, I'm going to say this with, like, a double edge kind of thing i really liked your movement well i really like your positioning at the beginning i feel like as we got on especially that last point your positioning wasn't as great just remember to still like play perpendicular from your team and try not to play like in your team i feel like it all kind of went wrong from the kitsune rush where you end up kind of playing in inside your team i want you to still play be playing off to the side ever so slightly still within beam range or played up on high grounds like you did on the first point. That was absolutely amazing. I wanted to keep up that movement because it was really, really good. Obviously, we've talked about the, that res, but overall, the rest of your reses were really, really great. Don't have any issues with the rest of your reses. Um, your Valks are pretty good as well. Like, I like the timing of your Valks. It's just who you try to push a uh, damage boost with in the Valk. Valk is absolutely great time to push the damage boost, but also, you know, try to help heal people up. And I feel like there's, um, with a few of your Valks, you weren't pushing your beams onto the right people. So if you can, try just to look to see who you're going to push the beam on. But um, I think one of my main pieces of advice to you, Rue, actually, is you've got the sling down really, really well. Now focus on doing GAs or GA bunny hops. What I mean by this, I'll quickly go into the practice range in case people don't know what I'm on about. What you can do is Mercy is you can cancel your GA um, or like let the GA like fully run out, basically, and then you can do a bunny hop. Oh, I think the game needs updating. It does. The game needs updating in like a, like a minute, so it might not let me in the practice range, which is a little bit frustrating. Um, oh! Oh, it is. Hallelujah. Okay, it's fine. It's gonna let me in the practice range. What you can do is you can do a... So this is my G target. Cancel my GA and I could do this little bunny hop at the end. The little bunny hop can give you so much good positioning and like little like extra movement. Because if I do a, like a mini sling like you were doing like this, for example, see how long my cooldown is compared to if I do this. 
my cooldown is up a lot quicker. It just means that you could do like little bits of movement a lot quicker and like get around a lot like faster. You can let your GA like fully play out as well and then do it. It's a little bit harder, but because you're on PC, it might help, you know, it's a lot easier to do. On console, it's a lot harder. So I like to kind of like cancel my GA as I get to the person and then do it because it's a little bit easier. But it can de we can definitely utilize it a lot more. Um, just try and get those like little bit of like extra like bits of cover basically and stuff like that. Um, but apart from that room, I don't think I've got too much more to say. Oh yeah, obviously push the damage damage boost more on like people that are being like more aggressive and just overall as well looking to see kind of like what uh, your team have ultimate wise. Obviously, this is kind of relating to the second point that you did and the soldier going around for the visor. Look to see who you can enable with your damage boost and look to see who's gonna have like the most use out of your damage boost because that means then you can go in like with them really really quickly and you'll know kind of like who you need to go and focus. Sorry about my dog barking in the background as well, everyone. Must be someone coming home. Uh, but yeah, thank you so much to everyone on YouTube that's watched this. Uh, by the way, as well, if you guys want your own VOD views, I talk about it in the beginning about how you can redeem one. So go and have a look there if you want any more info. But if you are still a little bit confused or you want to ask more, by all means, go and ask us, you know, on my on my twitch or go and ask in the discord the link will be down in the description you're more than welcome to ask myself or any of my lovely mods we're more than welcome to help out with any kind of like issues that you have but yeah thank you so much for watching the video everyone and i shall see you all later bye